Salam, salam. Lembre Peter Israel. Salam, salam. De Kike. Lembre Peter Israel. Around the world. Wherever you are in the world, I will distinguish the Supreme Royal Cause Central South Africa, the Promised Land, the land of Sinai. I will distinguish the dignitary, royal dignitaries in this Promised Land of Sinai, South Africa. Our royal court seating at Suntran Nelson Mandela Square in the Republic of South Africa which we call the land of Sinai. I send salam greetings to the Honourable, the Her Majesty, the Queen Mother of this Honourable Kingdom, Queen Mother Her Majesty Bukeka Haba, Israel. I will also distinguish members of the Royal Executive Council of this Honourable Kingdom, and distinguish all the princes and the princesses of this Kingdom of Lembrebeta Israel, I'll distinguish the High Priest of this Honourable Kingdom Abune Zion. I distinguish the Prince of Amun in the Temple of Amun in Indianapolis in the United States of America of Better Israel Kingdom. Prince Amun Charles Macmillan of Better Israel in the United States of America. I'll also distinguish the, the Kike Israel in all parts of the world where they can be found, in all places, in the lanes of their enemies, that I would like to send greetings of Salaam to all of them. This is King Biniam Salomon of Lember Better Israel. I'm speaking from a royal cause in Santiago de Chile in South America. Santiago de Chile and the lands and the mountain ranges of the Andes and the Cordillera of the great Mapuche people. I spoke in the dignitaries of this nation and the royalty of this nation as well. And we have been speaking with dignity and honor and have been collaborating greatly in a very diplomatic way and royal way. I would like to distinguish the princes and the princesses within this honorable kingdom here in South America. Send greetings to everyone in the world that will be able to hear this message through this medium to come to realize that it is time for this message to be sent out, that this message be given out about the status and the situation at this time currently of Lember Better Israel and the real royal updates and royal messages that must be made known to all children of Better Israel. You will remember that I had previously posted messages, royal messages that I have made through this medium and this platform to inform the children of Israel um, in any part of the world to hear this message. And so, therefore, I am able to stand here today or sit here today to tell you, to address you through the same medium and challenge that those that may not have heard 
uh, these messages that have been given previously through this medium. I can challenge a why haven't you heard? Why haven't you known the message? Why haven't you been told? Haven't you been been told? Haven't you heard the good news? Haven't you heard the royal messages that have been made through this medium? That the kingdom of Lembrebeta Israel is at hand. This message is coming again and again and again to all children of Israel around the world. It is extremely important to make it known to all of them that the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is near. I have spoken several times about the identity of the children of Israel in the kingdom that we are in right now. I'm not talking in general about the continent or republic of something or a certain region or a certain colonial structure that we do not recognize. So I'm only going to speak about the kind of entities or bodies that we recognize in this kingdom. We recognize kingdoms and only kingdoms and the nations that belong to these kingdoms and the dynasties. So those who are following the continent or following the Republic are not recognized in the kingdoms because that is not the true identity of the people to associate themselves with colonial structures, with colonial makeup, with colonial establishments. It is not dignified, it is not honorable to identify yourself with the colonial structure as your identity. So it is totally, totally not honorable. So therefore we are addressing from a point of view, from a note, a royal note of dignity and honor of who you are so that there is no misunderstanding of identity or mistaken identity as it has been the case for so many years and centuries. Now, the children of Israel have been told several times of these important messages, these essential news about the coming of this kingdom. And now, this evening or this day, I should like to make another announcement, which is very crucial announcement and very important announcement. I'll give you the title that the message for today is an appeal to all Lember Better Israel children. As we have always spoken about it in the in our forums, in our groups, and in our communities, that uh, the children of Israel are identified in a certain way. And that I would like to make it clear that when we talk about the children of Israel, we are speaking about those children that had come out of the greater Yemen in history. Yeah, they are the Basena. When you say Basena, the Ba denotes lineage or family. So then Basena, the people from Sena. Yes. And so they are the Basena because they come from Sena, and Sena is in Yemen. For those of you that do not know the meaning of the word Yemen, it is actually the same thing as saying Amen when you pray, when you finish your prayers. It says Ye, man, which means be true. Yes. Be honest. Honestly, truly, let it be so. This is the meaning of Yemen. And as those of you that are attending the courses in the Gers language, Gers, as you remember, is the mother tongue of all Arabic languages in the southern 
Arabian Peninsula, where the Israelites came from anyway. Yes. And so, my people, this message is for you, the Yemeni Israelites, the Basena, the Balemba, the Bamiyenye, the Basaba, the children of Saba. Yes. And uh, I'm yet to speak more about this Saba because most of the time when people speak about Saba, they just speak about him as if he's just an accident that uh, there was a queen of Saba and then accidentally met Solomon. No, it's not. It's a lineage of Saba. We are going to talk about it in future sermons, in future segments, to explain Saba, because we're getting confused that people just dropping a note and say, well, Queen of Saba, the Queen of Sheba. No, it's not Sheba, it's Saba. So, uh, Saba is a patriarch. Yes. He's a patriarch. Yes, he has a lineage. Yes. So you must understand that. We are still going to speak about it, but this message is for the children of Saba. Excuse me. The Yemeni Israelite from the greater Yemen, which I've just explained what it means right now. Yes. And this Saba and this Sinai is all heavenly, heavenly high places. That's where they come from. They come from high places. They come from the high plateau. And they come from the, the great areas that were on the mountains that were the green pastures of their flock. It's a beautiful area in the greater, greater Yemen, which became known as Asir. I know that the, the Muslims say Asir means something else, but in our language it means number 10 is Asir, which is number 10 in the digits. Yes, and so this is the place where the Israelites, as they are called after the patriarch, Israel himself. They named after him, but before they were even named after the patriarch, they were they were called the Basena since they came from Sena. And they were the Basaba because they came from the patriarch Saba before anyone called Israel could come into being. So this is important. So now I know, and then you know, what we are speaking about. Who? speaking about. The children of Saba, the Yemeni Israelites, listen to this message. Your kingdom is at hand. Yes. Now, I was sent here by an oracle to come to the land of the Mapuche at the end of the world. The, the place where I'm speaking you, to you from is the end of the world. There is nothing beyond this place. In Chile, this is the end of the world. And this is the jewel of the Pacific, and this is the end of the world. I was called to come here so that it could be fulfilled, as was spoken by the prophets, that the messenger and the son of Israel shall come back to build a kingdom, but must come from some place. He must return from some place. That's why this place becomes important, because I had to be taken here, so that I will have a place to return from. This is the, the apocalypse, and this is the, the way the prophetic words are mentioned. This is how prophetic things are revealed. That someone should go someplace and then have a place to return from and come back to the kingdom. So you remember in the history of the Basaba or the Balemba or the Yemeni Israelites that they moved from their homeland in Yemen and left their city of Sena which they built in memory of the ancestor Sena, now Sena is the ancestor of these people. It's very important to understand this history and the identity. There is an ancestor called Sena, after which they name themselves the Basena, after which they have a city called Sena. Yes, 
The city is not called Israel. It's called Sena because it is after the name of the ancestor Sena. This is very important. Now, children of Sena, you were taken out of Sena by your God, the Amlak, the Lord. When I say Amlak, I'm speaking in Gaz, meaning the Lord, the Master, the Supreme Being for you, the Amlak. Amlak Lakulu Manfas, in other words, the Master of all flesh, all spirit, and all flesh, Zasega. The Sega of the flesh as well, spirit and flesh. This is your God, the God of all spirit and all flesh. Took you out of Sena and you went to Hasaba, which is now which was called by the Greeks Abyssinia. Abyssinia is not the original name of the people or the identity. It was called Hasaba because it was the place of the lineage of Saba. That's why it's Hasaba. The word Ha here also denotes lineage or denotes ancestral connection or the patriarch connection. So they went to Hasaba, what you call Ethiopia today. The word Ethiopia is not, it's not part of this. It's not part of this vocabulary. Yeah, it's Hasaba. Then when they go to Hasaba, they split. Some remain in Hasaba inland for after crossing the Red Sea. That's why the, the oral tradition says we crossed Pusela. When they say we crossed Pusela, they are not talking about Masila, as to the prophet is trying to suggest that the Lambas were a little confused between the words Masila and Pusela. No, they're not confused. We're not confused about it. Sorry, we're not confused. Masela, not Pusela, not Masela. Okay? Thank you to the prophet. I think you, wherever you are, you will begin to understand the truth. That we are not confused about our history. As you were thinking. Thinking that we are confused. We are trying to say Masela, but then we end up saying Pusela. No. We are not confused. Sorry. And so we crossed the Pusela, which means we crossed the Red Sea, and into Hasaba. Yes. And then when we got to Hasaba, we got inland, and then some of the people remained in Hasaba, while others moved along the coast and settled between Tanzania and Kenya. There were mountains there. They settled on the mountain. Then after staying there for a while, they multiplied, and after that, they moved all the way down the coast until they got to Mozambique, which was the Sofala province, where they built the city of Sena again. So the city of Sena too was in in the East African coast. I don't like to use the word East African coast because I don't understand who this Africa is. I don't know him or her. I don't know this person, so I don't want to keep mentioning the people that I don't know. Yes. In the coast of Hasaba. Yes. And then they moved up to uh, Mozambique, which is also a colonial, a colonial name that I don't like. Maybe I should rather prefer Sofala, maybe something like that. Uh, that may not put me into jeopardy with this. Yeah, um, to say Mozambique, Portuguese name. We are not a Portuguese people, please, please. Sorry, we don't want to be identified with the wrong people. Yes. And so they settled there. Then we, we built Sena 2 that was built in in the areas of the, of Hasaba, close to Hasaba. And then Sena 3 was, um, was in the in this place called Mozambique by the Portuguese, which is not right, which was Sena, Sena 3. So that place is Sena. It's not Mozambique. I don't like Mozambique. Yeah. So therefore, that was the split of the people all the way to what we call Southern Africa today. 
That's why we have the Basaba, Balemba, the Yemeni Israelites, if they came after Jacob. Before Jacob, they were not called Israelites at all because this came from the Patriarch Jacob. So before the Patriarch Jacob came in, even when, yes, before he came in, sorry, but even after he came in, the people still were holding on to the name Saba, 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 the Patriarch, the oldest person in the area. Yeah, so now we will, I will speak to the children of Saba, the children of Yemeni Israel, after the Patriarch Israel, and I'll speak to the children that were speaking the Gaz language. And now they are in South Africa. So how did they get out of Yemen and go up to South Africa and Zimbabwe in so-called Southern Africa? The God that I told you about sent a star to lead them to this place. He sent a star. Yes, a star was sent and they followed it. Yes, they had a king and they also had a star as a compass, as a guide. A real star, I'm not talking uh, parables here. There was a star in the sky and they were looking at it and they were guided by the light of the star. Please, we need to understand this. Yes. Now these people called Basena, Basemba, Basaba, Balemba, they are now found in South Africa, which we are going to call Senai from now on. Hmm. Senai. South Africa, Sinai. Sinai means good, means heavenly, means from high places, means very important, means happy. That's what Sinai means. Heavenly, that's what it means. The place they were taken to was heavenly, was beautiful, was happy. That's why it is called Sinai. So they came to South Africa. How did they come to South Africa, these people, all the way from from Hassaba and from Yemen, they were guided by the star of their God, Amalak Nakulu Mafas, Walakulu Sasega, of all flesh and all spirit. The God or the Lord or the Master of all flesh, all spirit. The one who created both of these two things. That's why he's the master of them. He owns the flesh and the spirit of a of a, a living entity. That's what this name is all about. Yes. And this God, which is the universal God and the supreme God who created everything, was also honored by those who were not Basena and Valemba. And then when this God was mentioned, as a common name, not as a, as a personal name, they were just calling him God in the area that is called Southern Africa today, between South Africa and Zimbabwe, in the native languages, and even the language of what you call Chivenda, and Karanga, and Shona, this God was called Mwari. This is a name that is a common name for God in the language of these people. It doesn't mean that you're talking about a different God now who is not the God of us, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No. Because it's been misunderstanding that if you say Nwari, then you are saying it is not the God of the Israelites. It's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But in the part of Southern Africa, the language that the people spoke was not the language of Yemen, which was Gaia's language. So when they say God, they say Nwari in their language to mean God as a common name, not a personal name, not a proper name. Yeah, not a proper noun. So you must understand that Mwari does not mean a personal God of another nation that is not Israel. No. Big mistake. When you say Mwari, 
in this language, you are talking about the creator of all heavens and earth. You're not talking about the God of the Vavenda. No. He could be a God of the Vavenda because the Vavenda also are the people on the face of the, of the creation of God. So they should say the Supreme God in our language is called Mwari. Okay. So there has been confusion that if someone says, okay, Mwari has done this for me, Mwari is my God. Oh, that is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This God sent a star and he, he went with his people to this place and guided them and gave oracles, messages, voices on the road on the voyage and say, do this, go there, my people, cross this river, move to this place, instructions, voices of this God through the thunder, through the rain, through the lightning. Yes. The same God who took them out of Yemen, took them to Southern Africa and still was the same God of all creation. Yes. And then when they got to this part of Southern Africa, they spoke the language of the people of that land. And according to the language of the people of that land, a God is called Mwari, which is the supreme creator of all things. Whether they be Basena or they be Balemba, the God is the supreme creator of everything and is called Mwari in this part of the world. Yes. So I don't want you to get confused and say, now he's talking about another God. No. No. Talking about the God of Yemen, of Israel, of Hasaba. Yes. The God of Sena. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. And now, as I'm speaking right now, according to our lineage, the kingdom of this God and of the children of this kingdom is coming to, to them. It's come to a close. It's near. I want to announce this. And to those that don't know, I say, haven't you been told? Haven't you heard the good news about the coming of this kingdom? Yes. That's what I'm talking about today. So, my message is centered on this. Prepare for the royal anchorage. Prepare yourself, please, people, for the coming of the kingdom. Since he guided the Lemberbera Israel children to the place that we call South Africa today by a star and by a king that he had chosen, we are now recognizing South Africa as the promised land of the Yemeni Israelites because the God of the Yemeni Israelites from Yemen led them to South Africa through a star. So that's what makes South Africa very important. All right? Yes. Some say, why, why not Israel? Well, 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 I said so many times the star took them out of that place. If ever it's called Israel at all, they took, they were taken out of it and they were led by a star to the place that we are talking about now, which is South Africa, which I say in our language, it should be Sinai because it's the promised land of the Yemeni Israelites after they left their homeland in Yemen. So it is this children of Israel that I'm talking to and saying, prepare yourself for the coming of your kingdom. Yes, I am here in South America in the end of the world, the land of the Mapuche, and I'm coming back according to the oracle, according to the prophecy, and come back to you, to the promised land, and take you with me to the promised land in South Africa. Not modern Israel. No. No. The star did not lead them there. It led them to.
to what we call South Africa today and Zimbabwe and Mozambique. But now the final destination, these were all in route. Now the final destination was the last one of all of these places was South Africa, which in our language, according to our custom and tradition and, and culture, it is Senai because it's a special place they were taken to. Yeah. So, children of Senai, children of Saba, children of, of Amalak, Lakum of Fas, children of Mwari, your kingdom is coming at hand. So I'll say to you, those of you in South Africa and Sinai, please get yourself in groups. We're having forums in, on internet, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Twitter, and everywhere else. We are gathering our people, we are teaching. Some of you may not see it, but it's happening. We're teaching, we're gathering you in this way, but we will call, appeal to you from the Scots to form groups according to provinces in South Africa. Those in, in, in this particular province know South Africa has nine provinces and has got districts and municipalities and cities and capital cities of these provinces. Please let us get organized in all the provinces in the areas where you are in the Republic of South Africa, most of you. And those who are not in South Africa, you should consider moving to South Africa where the kingdom of Lembebeta Israel is going to. Yes, you must be prepared for the coming of the kingdom in Sinai. Hmm. The kingdom is coming to Sinai. Go to Sinai. We are taking you there to build a kingdom in Sinai. Now, I'm calling. There will be what you call, according to royal protocol, royal anchorage. The royal entrance means I will go to South Africa and I will meet you in a dignified, dignified way. With the shaking of the hand, with salam greetings, with ways of reassurance, and then the building of the kingdom together with you. So, let us know this. Get yourself into groups. If you are in Gauteng, if you are in KwaZulu Natal, if you are in Limpopo, get the Lember brothers and sisters around that area and form home groups. And in these home groups, choose a leader of each group and tell him that we want to organize yourself in that particular group, in that particular home in that particular district, in that particular province, and organize yourself and celebrate the Sambat in that area in your homes, according to your home groups. Get together with your brothers and sisters, celebrate all the feasts. The, um, the calendar is also displayed on the internet. So you just follow the season, uh, the, the, the calendar. On Facebook, we, we share it on the on the internet, on the website, everywhere you know, online. Just show all the brothers that are not able to access this on the computer, and just show them on the computer screen that this is the day of of the Sabbath, for example, or this is a feast of this kind of feast in Israel. This is the feast of um, the new moon, for example. This is the feast of um, atonement. This is the feast of of supplication. So the people will have to do these things in their homes in preparation for the royal entrance. When I come, I should find you doing these things. Praying together in your homes, eating together in your homes, praying together in your homes, observing the Sambat together in your homes, in different provinces, in different districts, in different municipalities. Groups, groups, groups all over the country and then until it's covered up. And then when I come, I come to the central part and then we meet. We will meet in Johannesburg, which is more centralized. And right from there, 
we will have to move to our own territory where we will have to settle the kingdom in that particular territory. Yes. And then all I'm appealing is at this point in time, organize yourself into groups, as I said. Yes. For preparation, in preparation of the royal entourage. The royal entourage means the arrival of the king to meet the people in a very honorable and diplomatic way so that we could start building together. It won't take very long before this royal entourage happens, but we must be fully satisfied from the royal cause in San Diego de Chile that the children of Israel in Sinai are prepared in the groups that I've just mentioned. Yes. The groups that I've just mentioned, all the provinces of Sinai, South Africa, must be prepared for the royal entourage and for the coming of the kingdom of Lember Beta Israel. So if someone says, why do you mean by the coming of the kingdom of Lember Beta Israel? I can turn around and say, well, now let me tell you about the day of judgment. Yeah. Maybe some of you are thinking that uh, the coronavirus looks like it's a castigation or something. Yeah, well, the real judgment is coming when the kingdom comes into Sinai. Yes, the children of Israel, Yemeni Israel, will have a territory in Sinai that will be attributed only to them, that they will serve the God that I'm talking about in that particular territory. What is special about Sinai again, which is South Africa? The shrines of this God who took his children from Yemen to Hasaba, to Sofala, to Chiramba, to Vangona, establish shrines there in Sinai. The shrines are still there and they're very active. So in the shrines, this consultation of this God. It's not a religious God that you have to close your eyes and imagine him in any form. No. Here there is ser serious consultation with this God. And whatever you need and whatever you want to say, you present it to him. If it's a problem, will be presented to him and he will solve it. If it's a sickness, it's presented to him in his shrines and he will heal it. A disease whether it be corona or what, he will heal it. He will remove it. He brings rain also for you. Sacrifices are offered at the shrines. He consumes the sacrifices with the fire that he, he, he makes himself. You don't light up a fire for the sacrifice. He brings the fire himself to consume the sacrifice. That's why I say to you, prepare for the royal entourage coming to Sinai. Yes. Salam de Kike, Lemba, Better, Israel, the children of Saba, the children of Sena, the children of Yemen, the children of Israel. This is King Binyam Solomon of Israel.